Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good afternoon dear students, in this lecture we will be studying non-Brahmin movements in western India. In this lecture we will be studying non-Brahmin movements in western India. First of all, the circumstances under which non Brahmin movements originated in Western India. What were the circumstances behind the origin of the non Brahmin movements? In the previous lectures, we come across with the fact that how the English system of learning affected the Indian society leading to the development of socio religious reform movements. During the British period, the agitation was not only against the British administration, not only against British, but also against the agitation was against the evil practices which had crept in society, especially agitation against Brahmins were also witnessed, the agitation not only against the British administration because of the evil practices of the society and in order to root out these evil practices, agitations were carried out against the dominance of the Brahmins in society as well. The western scientific thought and rationalism, development of rationalism and western scientific thought. which mainly caused the development of these movements against the Brahmin dominance. Now, we are coming to analyze the rise of non Brahmin movements in western India, non Brahmin movements in western India. What were the reasons behind the rise of non Brahmin movements in Western India? In Western Indian society, there existed Chadurvarna, the fourfold division of society Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Shudra. This fourfold or Chadurvarna system of society existed in western India. In this society, the Brahmins enjoyed higher position and they were ranked first. They used to serve as intermediary between God and common people and because of this priestly dominance, they enjoyed positive position in society. The second position went to the Kshatriyas, the Vaishyas and Shudras enjoyed third and fourth positions 
prospectively. According to the census report of 1881, the Hindu population in western India was 74.8. Western India here means that Maharashtra. In Maharashtra, the Hindu population according to 1881 census was 74.8% of the population in Maharashtra or Western India was Hindus according to the census report of 1881. Marathas who formed 55.25 percent of total population. The Marathas in Maharashtra formed 55.25 percent of the total population in Maharashtra and they were rich peasants engaged in agricultural practices since they were the main community engaged in production, they got economically empowered. The Marathas got economically empowered because of their agricultural productivity and they owned lands. However, in society they were given only low status, Marathas given, were given low status in society, even though they were the main producing class and economically empowered they were given only low status in society. The Brahmins enjoyed first position in Maratha society. This was the condition before the arrival of the British. What did happen with the arrival of the British in Maharashtra or Western India? Since the Brahmins were the literate class, they easily studied English. and occupied higher positions in British service like professors, barristers, lower bureaucrats, writers, writers, editors. And even in police and judiciary, they occupied lower post. The Brahmins, once with the introduction of the English system of learning, immediately learned the language and got jobs in British service, like professors, barristers, lower bureaucrats, writers, editors, and lower post in police and judiciary. It created this domination of the Brahmins in Maratha society created fear, created fear among the non Brahmins. But even before the arrival of the Brahmins, because of the Chaturvarnya system or fourfold division of the society, Brahmins enjoyed higher position in Maratha society. With the introduction of the English system of learning, they immediately learned English and occupied strategic positions in British administration. It created fear within the minds of the Marathas. Against this Brahmin dominance emerged the non Brahmin movement. Against this 
Brahmanical dominance, non Brahmin movement was originated in Maharashtra or Western India. It was Jodhi Rao Phule He was born in 1827, died in 1890. It was Jodhi Rao Phule who came forward questioning the superior position of the Brahmins in society. He was born in a Shudra Mali family in Pune. His father was a flower merchant. His father was a flower merchant. Being a member of the oppressed class, he was well aware of the problems of the Adi Shudras. Yodhi Rao Phule, he was born in 1827 in Pune. He was born in a Shudra Mali family in Pune. His father was a flower merchant. Since he belonged to lower caste Adi Shudra family, he was well aware of the problems faced by the Shudras in Maharashtra. What was the immediate provocation for Jodhi Rao Phule to start fight against the Brahmanical dominance in Maratha society? He came to attend the marriage function of his Brahmin friends, but the orthodox Brahmins orthodox Brahmins did not allow Jodhi Rao Phule to attend the wedding ceremony and he was forced to leave the place. since. He belonged to Shudra family. Jodhi Rao Phule was not allowed to attend the marriage function of his Brahmin friends. This was the immediate provocation for Jodhi Rao Phule to start his fight against the Brahmanical domination in the society. This incident took place in 1848. Consequent upon this incident, Jodhi Rao Phule started the search for truth, the reasons behind the subordinate position of the Shudras. He started the study of Vedas, the Manu Samhita, Manu Samhita, the Puranas. The thoughts of Gautama Buddha, the thoughts of Gautama Buddha and Tirthangaras, in the quest for search, he studied Vedas, Manisamgita, Puranas, thoughts of Gautama Buddha and Tirthangaras. In addition to this, he also went through the teachings of Fakti saints of medieval India. Fakti saints of medieval India. Western thought. Christian and Islamic religions. Christian and Islamic religions. He 
he went through ancient Indian scriptures, Fakti science of medieval India, Western thought, Christian and Islamic religions. He judged the entire culture through the application of the spirit of rationality, rationality and equality. He judged the teachings and philosophy based on rationality and equality. What was his finding of the study? He totally rejected based on the study of this Vedic, Buddhist, Tirthankara work or Fakti science work or the Western thought based on the study of these works. Jodhirao Phule came with the idea of total rejection, total rejection of caste system. He argued that complete completely opposed the subordination of of women superstitious beliefs and practices after studying the original scriptures jodhrao phule came out to totally reject the caste system, he completely opposed the subordination of women in society and he also opposed superstitious beliefs and practices in society. He argued that Dravidians were the original inhabitants Dravidians were the original inhabitants of the country the Aryans were the invaders they enslaved the Dravidians and established their hegemony and they then discovered, discovered divine origin theory of caste system, divine origin theory of caste system to exploit an atheist. Jodhirao Phule came up the argument that Dravidians were the original inhabitants of the country and the Aryans were the invaders. These Aryans subjugated the original inhabitants of the country, the Dravidians and established their hegemony and they found the divine origin theory of the caste system to further exploit the native Indians, Dravidians. This was the opinion intended by Jodhirao Phule. He opposed, he opposed rationalities. In Hindu religion, which kind of irrational practices and superstitious beliefs were stubbornly opposed by Jodhirao Phule, idol worship, idol worship. 
idol worship ritualism priesthood theory of karma theory of karma rebirth and heaven these were the superstitious beliefs and practices which jodhir ravu phule opposed his another argument that the brahmins hide it to the brahmins hide vedic text from the shudras why jodhirao phule argued that since the vedic text has contained clues contained clues about the enslavement about the enslavement of the shudras that is why the brahmins used it to hide the vedic text as from reaching the shudras like other socio religious reformers education education was necessary or a panacea to fight against all these evils education was necessary to fight against the these kinds of evils and superstitious practices this was the opinion tended by jodhirao phule he demanded the british government to give primary education primary education to masses by using teachers from cultivating class jodhirao phule demanded the british government to provide primary or elementary education to masses in order to root out these kinds of evil practices and beliefs from hindu society the condition of women was miserable not about the condition of women Jodhirao Phule argued that it was because of the Brahmins women got subordinated they remained uneducated the women were given only subordinate status to men Jodhirao Phule argued that Brahmins were behind the miserable position of the women he urged by bridegroom to take an oath to provide education to bride during the wedding ceremony jodhirao phule asked bridegroom to take the oath that he would provide education to the bride to his bride in addition to the fight against the brahmanical dominance the subordinate position of women in society he also raised his powerful voice against the exploitation of the peasantry 
exploitation of the persons. Yodhirao Phule raised his powerful voice not only against the caste system, superstitious beliefs and practices in society, he also raised his powerful voice against the exploitation of the peasantry. He questioned the burden of land revenue, burden of land revenue. He questioned the burden of land revenue, land alienation, land alienation to money lenders, land alienation to money lenders and indebtedness of the persons. Yodhirao Phule raised his powerful voice not against Brahmanical domination, superstitious practices and beliefs within the Hindu society. He also raised his powerful voice against the exploitation of the peasants. As you know land revenue was fixed very high by the British. Money lenders who charged exorbitant interest rate on the loans taken by the peasants from money lenders. If the money was not repaid on time, the lands of the peasants were taken away by the money lenders. Peasants for paying land tax used to borrow money from the money lenders and they were trapped in debt. Yodhirao Phule raised his powerful voices against this exploitation of the peasants as well. But he failed to develop any kind of coherent economic ideology. Yodhirao Phule, Phule however raised his powerful voice against these kinds of exploitation of the peasantry, he was not in a position to develop any kind of economic ideology. Now coming to activity, now after going to the major arguments made by Jodhirao Phule, now we are going to analyze the major activities of Jodhirao Phule. He mainly worked through publications. To propagate his ideas, he used to publish journals, magazines, magazines, books, pamphlets, The journal started by Jodhirao Phule was Deen Bandhu. This was the journal published by Deen Bandhu. It was published in Marathi language. Jodhirao Phule's activity include one through publications, he used to publish journals, magazines, books and pamphlets. Deen Bandhu was a journal started by Yodhirao Phule to propagate his ideas and views on Hindu society. This journal was published in Marathi language. What was his name of his book? Gulamgin. name meaning slavery. It was published in 1873. 
the other of mainly act mainly acted through publications in the form of books journals periodicals and pamphlets din bendu in marathi language was one of the prominent journals of jodhirao phule his book came into known as gulam king meaning slavery it was published in 1873 in this book he analyzes historical roots historical roots of shudra slavery and under brahmanical rom domination gulamgin was the book authored by jodhirao phule it analyzes the historical roots of shudra slavery under the domination of the brahmins and he compared it with the slavery with the negro slavery the negro slavery in america in this book he come used it to compare the slavery of the shudras with the negro slavery in america school he also founded school the school was founded in 1851 for girls education he also started a school for shudras one school jodhirao phule started in 1851 for girls education the emancipation of women could be done through educating the women this was the belief of jodhirao phule likewise he also started a school for the education of the shudras he also founded a water tank near his house to provide drinking water to shudras in addition to the foundation of schools he also created a water tank for providing the drinking water to the shudras his greatest activity was in 1875 then he founded satyasodak samaj satyasodak samaj was founded by jodhirao phule in 1875 to fight against the subordinate position of the shudras and to fight against the brahmanic dominance satyashodak samaj which literally means society for finding truth this is the meaning of satyashodak samaj now the evaluation of the works done by jodhirao phule one throughout his life he took the side of down road and classes he always worked for the emancipation 
of the sudras he his second fight was against the caste system he worked for the removal of caste system he always worked for the upliftment of the subordinate position of the downtrodden communities he considered that caste system was one of the major evils behind the subordinate position of the sudras he argued for the removal of the caste system establishment of democratic justice democratic justice establishment of democratic justice but the revolution brought out by jodi rao phule did not succeed did not succeed why the revolution brought out by jodi rao phule did not succeed one of the main reason was that radical changes needed to be needed to be made radical changes were required to be made in the agrarian relations radical changes were required to be made in the agrarian relations and removal of colonialism it was because of these two reasons jodi rao phule could not do could not achieve anything substantial through his activities the money lenders samintars were the agents of the british administration in india jodi rao phule failed to understand this fact these money lenders and samintars exploited the peasants they were the agents of the british administration in india removal of these agents would be done only with the end of the british rule jodi rao phule failed to understand this fact now we are going to analyze non brahmin movement in maharashtra after the death of jodi rao phule what did happen to non brahmin movement or satya shodak samaj started by jodi rao govind rao phule jodi rao phule died in 1890 with the death of jodi rao phule satya shodak samaj declined with the death of jodi rao phule satya sodak samaj declined but it was revived by whom it was revived by chatravadi shahu maharaj of kolgapur chatrapati shahu maharaj of golgapur 
even though after the death of Jodhrao Phule, Satya Shodak Samaj started decline, it was revived by Chhatrapati Shahu Maharaj of Golgapur. He founded another Satya Shodak Samaj. He founded another Satya Shodak Samaj in 1913 at Golgapur. Shahu Maharaj founded another Satya Shodak Samaj in 1913 at Golgapur. With the establishment of Satya Shodak Samaj by Shahu Maharaj, he furthered the cause of non Brahmin movements by starting educational institutions. In order to cater the needs of non Brahmins, Shahu Maharaj started educational institutions, hostels and started scholarship. He started scholarship for the students of the depressed classes. Shahu Maharaj started educational institutions, made hostel facilities and introduced scholarship for the students of the depressed classes. Secondly, during the period between 1913 and 1922, he actively associated with several non brahmin and Kshatriya caste conferences. Between the period spanning 1913 and 1922, he attended a number of non Brahmin Kshatriya caste conferences. Thirdly, under Shahu Maharaj, Shahu Maharaj, under Shahu Maharaj. The non Brahmin movement passed into the hands of new elements that is, business and law, land owning, business and land owning. upper caste non Brahmins under Shahu Maharaj the non Brahmin movements passed into the hands of land owning upper caste non Brahmins and it began to be used for political gains. these land owning and business men belonging to upper caste non Brahmin Hindu community began to use this non Brahmin movement for the political gains. 
Shahu Maharaj worked for getting Kshatriya status to his community to which he belonged. and himself from this it is clear that shahu maharaj totally deviated from the path founded by yodhiravu phule shahu maharaj used it to make non brahmin movements a middle class hindu affair and it used for protecting the political gains of the non brahmin upper caste hindus this line of working was totally against the path founded by yodhirao phule it resulted degradation degradation and poverty among the sudras actually it was for the benefit of the sudras and lower caste women yodhirao phule worked but once it passed into the hands of Shahu Maharaj his character changed earlier the Satya Sodak Samaj founded by Yodhirao Phule worked for the emancipation of Shudras and lower caste women who were given only a low position in society once the leadership began to be assumed by shahu maharaj the character of the sati sodak samaj founded by him began to change he used it to protect the ben protect the benefits of only the upper caste or lower middle class hindus middle class hindus after the passage of 19 19 government of india act it was passed in 19 not 9 as you know through the government of india act 1919 reservations were made for muslims and the sikh muslims and sikh community were given reservation through the passage of the government of india act 1919 since then shahu maharaj shahu maharaj along with the justice party another non brahmin movement in south india non brahmin movement in south india with the passage of the government of india act 1919 which made reservation for muslims and sikh since then shahu maharaj and justice party another non brahmin movement founded in south india used the movement satya shodak samaj for demanding special representation or reservation for backward
non Brahmins. Shatya Sohak Samaj of Shahu Maharaj and Justice Party worked for getting reservation for non Brahmins in legislative councils. Legislative council and legislative assembly. and the provincial legislature later the government granted reservation for non brahmins in central legislature three seats were given for non brahmins because of the works done by Shahu Maharaj along with Justice Party. Thus, on evaluation, the Satya Shodak movement deviated from the path started by Yodhirao Hule and it began to work for the protection of the interest of non brahmin middle class hindus now coming into major questions from this topic one name the society name the society founded by jodhirao phule Second question Name the journal started by Fule. Question number three What were the reasons? behind the growth of non brahmin movements in western india question number 4 Examine the ideology of Jodi Rao Fule. Question number five What were the conditions? of women in western India in latter half of the 19th century. These are the questions you are expected to answer. Thank you dear students for watching my class. Thank you.